government of India. Under his leadership, 16 successful missions have already been carried out in the last four years, and a dedicated moon mission, Chandrayaan-1, is being prepared for launch in 2008. He has provided major trust in evolving application programs such as teleeducation, telemedicine, and establishment of single window resource centers through satellite connectivity to improve the quality of life. He's a recipient of many awards, including the Padma Bhushan by the government of India. Dr. Madhunair, you've been creating a second vision statement of ISRO for ISRO in recent times. What significance does it have considering the overall economic progress of being made? Because earlier vision was using space for essentially improving the quality of life on the earth. Dr. Nair. Thank you, Professor Rao and uh, my fellow panelists, distinguished delegates. Before I talk about the second vision of uh, Indian Space Research Organization, let me talk about the first vision and how we have achieved it. Uh, our founding father, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, in the mid 60s, he postulated the space vision. And he had stated at the time that we should be second to none in application of space technology for solving the problems of man and society. This has been the driving force for the Indian Space Program. Today, we have the IRS and INSAT series of satellites, the PSLV and the GSLV launch vehicles, and a host of application systems which you have derived from the space-based uh, uh, equipments and services, which serves the people at large. In fact, as uh, Professor Rao has rightly pointed out, our trust has been how to make use of space technology for meeting the challenges associated with the development, development of the national systems, whether it is in the communication, the meteorological observation, the earth observation, and uh, also the management of earth resources. This has been uh, fulfilled and today we have a strong base. We have emerged as a unique uh, system of uh, constellation of satellites which are serving the day-to-day -day life of the people. In fact, um, at this moment, uh, our attention is uh, on what next. Yes, uh, space is going to be the next frontier as far as the humankind is concerned. And low-cost access to space become a very important aspect for the future space mission. So as ISRO, we would like to maintain and uh, perhaps take a lead as far as the low cost as the space is concerned. It will involve development of new propulsion system, new launch vehicles which can be recovered and reused, and perhaps uh, even attempting air breathing propulsion and new materials and technologies. Uh, not forgetting about the societal applications, we will be giving strong trust to the environmental monitoring, the monitoring the planet Earth on a continuous basis, and sharing this data with the international community. The exploration of the planetary system, the solar system, is very much in our agenda. But above all, to maintain and sustain such program, the human resource become an important element. We are trying to see how the youngsters can be enthused to take up the challenges of the space and in the coming years and how they can be trained to meet the future demands of the space uh, exploration. In this, towards this, we have establishing a unique institute in India which will meet the educational needs of space science and technology. And of course, the India is emerging as a strong economic power. Once we have the economic power and also what we have established through the space technology institutes in the